All right, guys, so at this point, I'm sure most of my fellow global players are getting a little bit tired of the current celebration and the current banners and are very much looking forward to what's coming up next. And as a lot of you probably already know, the next Dokkan Fest banner that's dropping on Global is for the Fizz Super Saiyan Kid Trunks and Super Saiyan Kid Goten, which will be releasing in roughly five days from now. So in today's video, I want to give you guys a quick breakdown of essentially everything you need to know about them from the unit details to the new category, the new side unit, the banner, of course, and also the animations to hopefully help you guys decide whether or not you want to spend your hard earned dragon stones to potentially pull them or to continue saving for the sixth anniversary, which is literally right around the corner it's what may 26th today and the anniversary starts at the beginning of july so we got like a little bit over a month to go but anyways that is the plan for today if that sounds good to you then make sure to keep watching and the first thing we're gonna do here is pop over to the official dokkan twitter page where we will watch the animations for this new unit let me just turn off my own music here and we'll screen this. Enjoy. Alright, so there you go. Those are the animations for the Kid Goten and uh, Kid Trunks. And as I've said in the past, obviously this isn't the first time I've watched them. But when I first saw them, I was like, I wasn't that hyped for this unit at first. But now I am because the animations are just so freaking clean, guys. I love them. I really do. And they also got my boy Krillin in there, which I really appreciate. So, um, yeah, I mean, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about them. But as you can tell, I'm a big fan. Now, from there, let's uh, jump over to Deep Z Space, where we can take a look at the banner. Now, I don't think Global's going to get the exact same banner because we're most likely not going to have Fizz Frieza since he was just uh, featured on the... Uh, is it the Goku banner or the Vegeta banner? Either way, one of the banners has this Frieza, so he's probably gonna get replaced, and this might be wishful thinking, but I'm really hoping that Int Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta takes this guy's spot, because that would just raise the overall value, the overall um, excitement level of this banner by quite a lot, right? So hopefully Frieza gets replaced by uh, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Um, otherwise, you know, like it's a good banner, but it's not the best banner we've seen. We got, of course, the new unit, the Super Saiyan Kid uh, Trunks and Goten. And then we also have this new side Krillin, who is surprisingly good. He's a surprisingly good side unit. And uh, we'll talk about what he does in a second. And of course, this Gotenks is very very good uh, especially recently i've been using him for like um you know super battle road extreme super battle road and he's been very clutch for those events and then this guy i know a lot of people have been looking for because he's essentially the best leader for the uh, super saiyan for goku and vegeta extreme z battle event so if you've been looking for a proper leader then this guy is definitely you know one that you want and then we have the lr go bros I get what, why they're here, obviously, but 
they've been featured a lot, but to be fair, they're still a very powerful unit. And also a Dokkan Fast Outlaw, so have them here definitely doesn't hurt. And uh, the other two units, this Super Boo and also this Super Saiyan 3 Go Tanks. Um, you know, not the best inclusions, but this guy still hits decently hard, and this guy has his uses. Um, he's not ideal, but he's not as bad as some people make him out to be. Uh, so I would say overall great for this banner, assuming, assuming the Frieza gets replaced by Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. Uh, I would give it like a 7, 7.5 out of 10. So good banner, solid value, not amazing, but not bad by any means. So from there, let's pop over to the Dokkan Wiki and we'll go over the details for the uh, kids as well as the, the Krillin. Okay, so starting with these guys, later skill is Gifted Warriors, and I think this used to be called Prodigious Warriors on JP, or rather the translation from Japanese was Prodigious Warriors. Now it's Gifted Warriors, or Kamehameha, category key plus 3, HP attack plus 170%, and defense plus 130%. Now, even though Gifted Warriors is not like the best category, it's actually not bad though. We'll, we'll take a look in a second, but it's not a bad category, but it's not amazing. But they're also a Kamehameha lead, which is one of the best categories in the game, right? So the combined leader skill for this unit, I think makes them one of the best leaders in the entire game because there are so many amazing units in the Kamehameha category and then you add the Gifted Warriors category as well. And uh, yeah, they're just a really good leader. Their team is excellent, so I like that a lot. And then super attack raises attack for one turn and causes immense damage. That's of course the normal super, but there's also a unit super attack with Krillin, which greatly raises attack for one turn and causes immense damage and raises allies attack by 30% for one turn. And the condition for this unit super attack is um, you need a, another ally whose name includes Trunks Kid or Goten Kid attacking in the same turn or when there is a Krillin on the team. Passive is attack and defense plus 150% when performing a super attack, great chance of additional attack and defense plus 50%, great chance of an additional attack and defense plus 50%, so that's twice, and then key plus 1 up to key plus 3 plus an additional attack and defense plus 10% up to 50%, and chance of evading enemies attacks including super attacks plus 7% up to 30% with each attack evaded including super attacks. And then the active skill is key plus 6 and evades enemies attacks including super attacks for one turn. So you kind of need this active skill to uh, build up this latter half of their, of their passive. And the condition for the active skill is you need another ally whose name includes Trunks Kid or Goten Kid attacking in the same turn starting from the third turn from start of battle once only. So. Obviously, three turns isn't bad at all, and you'll most likely want to bring a Trunks Kid or a Goten Kid for blinking purposes anyways, so um, I think the condition overall is pretty good. The effect obviously is amazing for this unit since it allows you to stack up this part of their passive, and if they are fully stacked up and if their passive is fully activated, this unit is a monster, guys. Like, they hit so damn hard. And they can get a ton of defense on top of that. And they got some good links, in my opinion. Obviously, some solid categories. Amazing leader skill. So, just a lot to like about this unit. Uh, definitely not a unit to be slept on. Um, the only issue, of course, I see is that they're coming right before, right before the anniversary. And obviously, they're not better than... MUI Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, but for a Dokkan Fest TUR, they are definitely up there among the best TURs in the game, maybe even top 5, I would argue, but um, yeah, just really, really, really good. Links are Innocent, Super Saiyan Kamehameha, Prodigies, Budding Warrior, Prepare for Battle, and Fierce Battle, and categories are Hybrid Saiyans, Joined Forces, Movie Heroes, Youth, Super Saiyans, Kamehameha, 
and gifted warriors. And uh, of course, I missed this calculation part, which um, makes them even more insane. The additional attack and defense plus 50% is calculated separately. Okay, so you can get a maximum boost of attack and defense plus 400% when performing a super attack if their full passive is activated, but not including this part right here, right? So just the 150% and then 50% here and 50% here can give you up to 400% attack and defense. And then if you get this part fully stacked up, so you get, um, I guess, five dodges off, right? Then you can get up to attack and defense plus 500% after evading five attacks. So that explains why they're so crazy because the boost that they can potentially get is just so astronomical, you know? But of course I said potentially, which uh, does mean that there is, you know, a fair bit, a fair bit of RNG involved here because, you know, great chance is high, it's 70%, but you gotta trigger that twice to get these two 50% attack and defense boosts. And then you gotta wait until you can activate the active skill to get the dodges. And even then you would have to, you know, get five dodges to fully build up their passive, right? So um, yeah, there is that RNG aspect, but it makes sense because if that wasn't part, you know, if the RNG wasn't there, then, they would just be too busted, <laughs> I think. They would just be too broken. Although by today's standards, I mean, look at GT Goku and GT Vegeta, right? Like, those guys are really damn busted from turn one. But uh, my point is, you know, they, they do have a few cons, uh, I guess. But I think the pros definitely outweigh the cons. So that is the Goten and Trunks and... Yeah, I mean, my overall opinion is they are just ridiculous. They are a ridiculous, ridiculous TUR, really, really powerful, and uh, definitely a unit that I personally really want. Now, moving on to the category, the Gifted Warriors category, I'll give you guys a quick look. So we have, of course, the Goten and Trunks, and then we also have this new tech, um, Goten, which I believe is coming with Videl. Yeah, I think he's dropping with a Videl banner, which uh, probably is coming after the anniversary. And then here are the LRs. We got SSB, Vegeta, Mighty Mask, uh, Majin Vegeta, the Making Piccolo. We got <laughs> Int Piccolo, the Prime Battle Vegeta, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, uh, Super Saiyan 2 Angel Vegeta, and LR First Form Frieza. And then, of course, I'm not going to name every single unit here. You guys can take a look, but it's actually a fairly sizable category with a fair amount of like good units you know like you got a lot of freezes you got um you know quite a few extreme units too if you want to build a primarily extreme team i guess although it's probably not the best option and uh yeah just some good choices and then you pair that with kamehameha and you just got so many options for for your team you know so that's why i say man great great leader skill for this unit and Prodigious Warriors is one of the better new categories we've seen recently. Now, last thing we're gonna do here is take a look at this. Uh, why do I keep blanking on Krillin? I don't know why, he's my boy too. Krillin, this new tech Krillin. And as I said, man, this guy's actually like surprisingly good. You know, his leader skill is Savior's category, he plus three, HP attack and defense plus 120%, super attack, raises defense for one turn and causes supreme damage. And passive is attack and defense plus 120%, super class allies keep plus 2, attack and defense plus 30%, plus an additional, an additional keep plus 2, and attack and defense plus 30% for super class allies, an additional attack plus 120%, and reduces damage received by 30% when there's an ally whose name includes Trunks Kit or Goten Kit attacking in the same turn, plus an additional damage reduction of 10% and super class allies chance of performing a critical hit plus 10% when there is a movie bosses category enemy. So this guy can give up to, <laughs> yo, you can give up to key plus four and attack and defense plus 60% to super class allies when you have kid trunks or goten on rotation. That pretty much makes him the best super class support in the game, I'm pretty sure. I think so. I think so. But of course, it is conditional, right? It's not like 
you know, he just gives that to anybody. So there's that part, but that that's pretty crazy, man. Q plus four, attack and defense was 60%. And then on top of that, he is gonna be getting a lot of attack and also some good damage reduction. And um, he can also give crit chance. He can also give crit chance if you're facing movie bosses. So, I mean, he is gonna be kind of confined to like a few specific teams if you want the most out of him. But in those situations, he is very, very good. Man, that support is just, it's just nuts. Like that, that, that is, that's some crazy support right there. And uh, links, of course, Turtle School, Experienced Fighters, Courage, High Compatibility, Solid Support, Kamehameha, Fierce Battle. Not the best links. Very, some, some very niche links, for sure. But the support obviously makes up for it, right? So even if you're not sharing key links with anybody on rotation, if you're giving key plus four, then it doesn't really matter, right? And then uh, categories are Movie Heroes, Kamehameha, Earthling, Saviors, Battle of Wits, and Turtle School. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it. There's not much more to talk about with this Krillin. But such a good side unit, man. Such a good support unit. I'm glad my boy Krillin got his respect. I mean, we had we had a really good bald Krillin, right? The LR Krillin. Now we have a really good hair Krillin. So I'm happy about that. And that is pretty much the breakdown, guys. There's not much more to talk about. Um, if you want my advice, obviously, when I make these videos, I try to give you guys enough information to make the decision for yourself, but my advice to the average player would be wait and see if there are some kind of discounts. I think there's probably going to be like three steps, you know, just like um, the Beerus banner had, just like, did the Gogeta banner have it too? Was it Kefla? The Kefla banner, I think I had it as well, but where, you know, like the first two steps are discounted and then the third step is a full multi but you can get a guaranteed featured unit. If that's the case, definitely do those three steps because that gives you a good chance of pulling either the Krillin or the Kid Goten and Trunks, right? If there's no discounts, then... Oh man, it's a tough call. It's a tough call, but I would skip this banner, guys. Um, under normal circumstance, under, under nor normal situation, I would recommend people to spend you know, a couple hundred stones on this banner, maybe, but just given the timing, man, the anniversary is right around the corner. So I think the average player should skip just because how of how good these sixth anniversary LRs are because of the the, the discounts, the, the tickets, and everything we're getting from those banners. So I would recommend a skip to the average player. But like I said, the choice is up. The choice is up to you. It's ultimately your decision, and I've already already expressed how. You know good i feel like these two units are right and how good their leader skill is and all that stuff so it's gonna be a tough decision let me know in the comments down below which you guys uh plan to do uh with this banner with this unit are you gonna be summoning are you gonna be skipping if you are summoning how many stones are you planning to spend or are you just waiting to see if we get those discounts right because i think it's likely i think it's likely um those discounts are usually there to entice us to summon before a major release like the anniversary right so it would just make sense and uh yeah we'll see we'll see but that is today's video guys um hopefully this video helped you decide what to do when this banner comes out and uh as always if you liked today's video then make sure to like the damn video and if it's your first time watching me first time to the channel and you like what you see then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now, and while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time. Hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.